Hello everyone. How's everyone doing today? I hope you're all loved, safe, and protected. Today it's going to be some more verses. The first of which is Jeremiah 16, 19 through 21, which we'll also repeat at the end, and you'll understand why as it wraps together it's everything together. Lord, my strength and my stronghold, my refuge in a time of distress. The nations will come to you from the ends of the earth, and they will say, our ancestors inherited only lies, worthless idols of no benefit at all. Can one make gods of himself? But they are not gods. Therefore, I am about to inform them. And at this time, I will make them know my power and my might. Then they will know that my name is the Lord. Those whose strength is from the Lord whose refuge is in their stronghold of truth, will always be protected from the sins of their ancestors. They will see that all they have put before God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ are but lies of Satan and his workers in this world. God is showing all in this time his power and might. All will know his name is the Lord for what he is bringing forth in this present time. Next is Psalms 15, 1 through 5. <clears throat> Lord, who can dwell in your tent? Who can live on your holy mountain? The one who lives blamelessly, practices righteousness, and acknowledges the truth in his heart, who does not slander with his tongue, who does not harm his friend or discredit his neighbor, who despises the one rejected by the Lord, but honors those who fear the Lord. By the way, the one the Lord rejected is Satan. Who keeps his word, whatever the cost. Who does not lend his silver at interest or take a bribe against the innocent. The one who does these things will never be shaken. Only those who fear the Lord, who obey his commands. Who let die in them, which is of Satan and his workers in this world. And who, ever, and who never relent in this, no matter the cost to them shall inherit the kingdom of God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Next is Jeremiah 17, 5 and 9 through 10. This is what the Lord says. Cursed is a person who trusts in mankind. He makes human flesh his strength, and his heart turns from the Lord. The heart is more deceitful than anything else, and incurable. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, examine the mind. I test the heart to give each according to his way, according to what his actions deserve. All those who trust in mankind in themselves turn from the truth of God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The human heart is the most wicked in all of creation. There is only one God. There is only God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who can turn Satan's heart of wickedness inside of us, born into us, to their truth for eternal life in their kingdom. All will be judged according to what they have put forth in this world and to all of creation. Next is Judges 7-2. The Lord said to Gideon, You have too many troops for me to hand the Midianites over to them, or else Israel might elevate themselves over me and say, I have saved myself. God will remove all things from you, so that you may know it was only him who has delivered you and given you victory, so that you may never take this as your own doing. This is a reminder that all is given and taken from us by God himself and not by our work. Next is 2 Corinthians twelve nine and 10. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. My power is perfected in weakness. Therefore, I will most gladly boast all the more about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may reside in me. So I take pleasure in weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and in difficulties for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. God and Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior's grace, power, and strength are enough for us to come through all adversity. In our weaknesses, we are made strong through their grace. This is how we are drawn near to them. Through our trials and tribulations are we made to endure
to the end with eternal life in their kingdom. So when you experience trouble of any kind, rejoice in them, for they are with you, leading you, making you stronger in your faith and trust in them, making you more Christ-like. Just as, Je just as Jesus Christ suffered for our sins, so shall we suffer for God's and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's sake. Next is Colossians 3, 1 through 11. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is hidden in Christ, in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death what belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil, desire, greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, God's wrath is coming upon the disobedient, and you once walked in these things when you were living in them. But now put away all the following, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and filthy language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self. You are being renewed in knowledge, according to the image of your Creator. In Christ there is not Greek and Jew, circumcision and uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. Now, once you have salvation through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you may, you must, put away the dead self in this world. You must die to your old way of living, for it is only eternal damnation in hell. You must adopt the new self in Christ Jesus and God by living for them and the only truth which is them. All are going to be judged accordingly for their disobedience to God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and for their sins against God's creations. His vengeance and wrath will be poured out on all, but those who are with them will be saved from this. Next is Romans 8.18 for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is going to be revealed to us. Now this world and everything therein are but temporary. This includes all suffering that we face and endure. These things are not worth sacrificing your eternal life in their kingdom for this temporary time on earth. For if you do, your portion will be in this life only, then in the lake of fire for all eternity in hell. Instead, focus on God and Jesus Christ alone, always enduring hardship of every kind for the glory to come in their kingdom with eternal life. The last one is the repeat of the first, Jeremiah 16, 19 through 21. Lord, my strength and my stronghold, my refuge in a time of distress, the nations will come to you from the ends of the earth, and they will say, Our ancestors inherited only lies, worthless idols of no benefit at all. Can one make gods for himself? But they are not gods. Therefore, I am about to inform them. And this time I will make them know my power and my might. Then they will know that my name is the Lord. Now, then you will say to yourself, I am happy that I gave my life to God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that I have made them my stronghold and strength in all things, that I am not what I have inherited from my ancestors, which is idolatry before God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That which is coming for all who oppose them will have sacrificed their very souls for their sinful iniquities, and I have been redeemed from my dead self and sinful ways by giving myself completely to them, with eternal life in their kingdom, with them, and only through them. Remember, God, Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit, the angels, and I love you all without question or reservation. May God's love, peace, grace, blessings, joy, mercy, understanding, compassion, caring, kindness, patience, wisdom, protection, guidance, glory, goodness, corrections, trust, truth, forgiveness, salvation, strength, endurance, clarity, favor, and anointing, and everything good of them 
be with you all, always guiding you through. I love you all, and I will see you later.